Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our third Wednesday night um, in our Lenten season. And so after tonight, then we'll have three more um, Wednesday nights. And you, it's going to be hard tonight because you get a smell. We're having a taco bar tonight. So you might want to stay. Uh, it's a, a, the church um, of outreach. The board of outreach is providing the meal tonight downstairs. And so we'll try to keep you focused on the Lord. And then we'll celebrate the Lord's blessings downstairs. And so glad to be with us tonight. Our theme, as we're talking about, is Christ, our home, Christ's heart. And uh, make it, and so we'll, um, this is an insert. We'll, that'll, that'll be part of the message tonight. Um, and so let's begin with our memory verse this evening, if you join me. We're on Revelation 3.20 together. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. Revelations 3.20. And so that's our theme. And so tonight we'll go to the, um, to the entrance of the door and to our library and our living room as Christ goes into our hearts. And um, how much of the room of the heart, your house, would you let Christ into? And that's our theme tonight. So let's begin now with a prayer and then our opening hymn this evening. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we have come to your presence this evening in the middle of the week. And Lord, I, I just received a phone call from one of our members who's a truck driver. And he's driving through Arkansas right now. And he lifts up prayers for safety and that he's away from the church tonight. But Lord, just as you are with us, you are with Jim. And so, Lord, it's great to be in your presence. And now, no matter what type of week we've had, we're safe in your arms. And now, Lord, take our hearts and make it your home as we enjoy the music, worshiping for you, and then also hearing your grace and love tonight to guide us in our hearts. Let this service be pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Tonight, um, we're really blessed here here at Trinity um, with, with our music, with our singers, um, with music at all three services, um, a lot of help on um, the, the mill downstairs, and also with our media. We're really blessed with John Voss teaming up with me to give us another aspect of our message. If I was here to, to talk for 20 straight minutes, you'd probably get five minutes of what I talked about for 20 minutes. We have videos um, on our computer screens and our, on our phones and our TV. And to help us to begin the message, the first half is what would it look like having Jesus actually come into our house to live with us? It's kind of cool in the Old Testament. They always use, God always used physical things to um, point to spiritual truths. As you take a look at like slavery in the Old Testament, the slavery in the New Testament is our sins. The promised land in the Old Testament, the promised land in the New Testament is heaven. The sacrifice that went on and we celebrate, this is really a butcher table. And this is points to Christ on the cross for you and I. And so let's use a physical item, our house tonight. And let's watch as Jesus comes to the first couple rooms of our home. What would you do if you saw Jesus walking down the street? Would you stop and say hello? Or would you offer him a ride? Or perhaps you would just keep driving? What if he came to your door? Would you be embarrassed about what he might see? Would you be too busy to stop and let him in? Or would you welcome him with open arms into your home? Oh my, what? Leave us alone. I'm a pastor. I have my own church to go to. Oh, okay. Coming, coming. Man. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. Jesus, what are you doing here? Well, I've come to live with you for a while. Well, I wish you would have let me know. I would have cleaned up the place. That's okay. I just want to live with you for a while and see how you're living these days. <laughs> well, here. Let me show you your room, the guest room. Okay. Down the hall here. You have the rest bathroom to your right. And this you can. Hmm. Here's the guest room for you. Okay. Right, this you. And I um, you know, since it is my heart, I um, 
it's my house, it's very private. I kind of keep everything under lock and key. So um, oh. if you want to see something, so just you'd let be me okay know. if I just looked around and well, this is you stay here yeah. and on Sunday mornings we'll okay. we'll go together to church sure. and Wednesday night. But, and, but you'd be okay if I kind of looked around and well, made myself a, at home. Here? Uh, just a little, just okay. a little. Let me know what room you want to see and I'll clean it up. And I'll give you plenty of notice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm going to see what else is in this home. Hey. I'll be out in a Are you in there? I'll be right in. Jesus, I'll be out in a second. Hold your horses, okay? We'll um, we'll get together for Bible study. Here I am. Oh my goodness! What? Jesus, what are you doing here? This is private. Well, I was going to ask, what are you doing here? Well, it's kind of embarrassing. I um, That's why I kind of keep things all locked up, because I I know some of the things that I do are is not um, healthy or godly. Well, I'm sure you're on a godly, healthy website, right? No, not at this time, Jesus. Well, that's why I've come into your home today, to help you make it more friendly for you and for your friends oh, and for me that's good to hear i you know the church seems so judgmental and you know that's why a lot of times we do things in secretly but if, if you're willing to help me and not condemn me and help me change what i see on the internet or the pictures on the wall my imaginations it's pretty embarrassing but if you'll help me that's that's great great I'm, news i'm here only to help you not to judge you only to help you. You know, I'd really like to help you plan your day. I'd like to have you find a place where you start out each morning just to be one with the Word. And where is that? That's a great idea, Jesus. In fact, a, a perfect since we're is in the backyard. I could start the day with you. Sure. Plan the day out together. I'd like oh, that. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, over here. Okay. All right. Yeah, out here, Jesus, is a great a great place that I love to start the day to have my my coffee and just to, um, just to start the day. Devotional time with you would be awesome, one on one. I would enjoy that. What what is on your agenda today? Well, let me tell you what I have to do today. Okay. Good morning. Tim. Thank you, Jesus, for being here again. I'm glad to be here. here. So here's a little coffee for you. Thank you. Hey, here's to a Wednesday. To a Wednesday. I, my, it's a tough schedule on Wednesday. I got chapel early and have a lot to do. Yeah. And so, um, so we can make it quick today, if you don't mind. Well, maybe we could take a little bit of time this morning and take a few moments to get into the Word and right. start your day out and good. On a good right, way. That sounds good. All right. That sounds good. Go ahead, Rita. Let's pray. Okay. Okay. Lord, Heavenly Father, let's help Tim have a good Wednesday. Amen. Hey, Jesus, I am running out of hey, time this morning. morning. It's, it's getting close to Sunday. I wish I could stay, but I really got to get going. I'm sorry. Please, please. Well, no, do it next week. Or please, we'll please more, take a seat. More time. I'm sorry. I really got to run. I'm I late. I'm late. I, I, I think it's important. I 
Well, good morning. Oh, hey, Jesus. Are we gonna we're gonna meet this morning? Well, I want to meet with you every morning of the week. Uh, you know, it's my day off, and I I got a tea time I gotta get to in five minutes. I certainly so. think that's a great thing to do. I still yeah. think it's very important for us to meet uh, every I'm morning. I'm sorry, Jesus. That. Okay. Well, next time. I gotta go, man. Right. I gotta go. I'm sorry. Well, we'll catch you. We'll do devotion at dinner time. Sunday morning, Pastor Thank Jim. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, have you been out here every morning this week? I'm out here for you every morning to have spent some time with you. I'm sorry. I get Life gets so busy. and There's no excuse. It's so important to have you in my house, my heart. And now I treat you like you're not even here. My only desire is to have a friendship with you, spend a few minutes with you at the beginning of the day, and of course at the end of the day. So what do you got planned for today? Well, it's good to start with you. It's Sunday morning. We got the church services, and I'm going to need your help to get through to share the message. Let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father. Here we can. I think we can all relate. Um, our journey as as believers in and having a, a walk with our Lord and Savior, and so. This story um, I first read back in the 80s, and I've always touched my heart. And what we'll do, we'll, we'll continue this next week, and we'll do a, we have about four more rooms that we'll go all the way to Good Friday to take a look at as a disciple of Jesus Christ. But I'd like you to right now, as we finish our message, just take out this insert, and this is called a Christian house blessing. And this is something that... I want you to, with your family and, and um, your spouse in the next couple days, take a look at this. And this is what God calls us to do, as our hearts have different compartments in it. And so as you take a look at the blessing, my heart, Christ's home, number one, the blessing to have a God's presence in your home and heart. And these three verses, starting with 2 Samuel, and it's interesting, 2 Samuel chapter 6, David is now the king. And now he's bringing the Ark of the Covenant home to Jerusalem. But you might remember the story is that they could not touch the Ark. And as they had these poles on either side, all of a sudden one person slips. And the Ark starts to slip. And the person did what to the Ark? He touched it. And he died. The holiness of God. And you can see, and that's where this verse begins then. and says in verse, And David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into the city of David, but David took it in a side to the house of Obed-Edom, the Jittite. And look what happened to this house, this house that hosts the ark. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Hittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told to King David, The Lord has blessed the household of Ovid and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Ovid to the city of David with rejoicing. And with those who, have, who had the ark of the Lord had done six steps, he sacrificed an ox and a fattened animal. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing... Of linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with shouts of horn. And this is what we can do is stand in the front of your house in the front yard and read this verse and then have a prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to have joy in our house and in our hearts. You only can bring this joy into our home and into our lives. And then Revelation, our theme. Says, and why don't you read with me, Revelation, together? I know your works. You are neither cold nor hot. 
Would that, would you neither cold or hot? So because you are lukewarm in neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say, I am rich, I have prospered, I need nothing. Not realizing that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich in white garments so that you may clothe yourself and shame of your nakedness may not be seen. And same to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come to him and eat with him and he with me. The one who conquers, I will grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also conquer and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And then, after you say that in the front yard, because we know our house and our hearts are not pure. We're sinful people. We don't let Jesus into every compartment. And then have a prayer. And let's say that prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive us not always warming you in our house and our hearts. Thank you for your forgiveness. Jesus has come to clean our hearts and our home. And then the last one, Luke 10. Let's read that together, that one verse. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into our hearts. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, please come into our house and renew your presence in our hearts and make it yours. And this is as a Christian. Every day we have to recommit our lives to our Lord. It's easy to, to just keep Jesus in a bedroom, lock and key until Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. But as we have Bible studies and with fellow Christians, is that Jesus is a part of our whole being. So as you turn the page, now we come to the entrance of the house. And go to the front door and read Joshua 24, 14 to 15 with me. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and faithfulness. Put away the gods that your father served before the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it's evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your father served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord, dedicating your house and your heart to servanthood. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we desire to serve you in every area of our house in our hearts. We will need your Holy Spirit, which we receive through baptism, to guide us. And now the two rooms, the library, your living room, or your office. Go to where that TV set is, or that computer screen. And take this time, and let's read Philippians 4, 8-9. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things, what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. And pray. And let's pray this tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we will need your self-control to protect us from the sins and evils we see with our eyes and fill our minds and thoughts. We've all been there. And there's things that we know on the computer that we should not look at. But it's there. It's easy to get. There are magazines and even books of literature that are not healthy to read. What good does it do for you and I? And I know there's programs that, that I like to DVR, and, and I know that, you know, it's, 
probably not the healthiest. And these are things that God wants to help us with, to help us, encourage us to live a life that we can have peace and not always hiding. And that's why he's come. And the best way is the last blessing. To spend time with Jesus in devotional time. Find a place to have your quiet time, your devotional time with Jesus. It can be in the dining room, the living room, your bedroom, or wherever you can meet with Jesus each day to plan out your day. And let's read Psalm 37 together. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord and trust in Him, and He will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light, your justice as the noontime. But be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. And let us pray. Dear Jesus, just as you desire to meet with me each day, I too desire to have you help me plan out my day. Give me the time, the energy, the sense to meet with you before I walk out the front door. And after we may, I want you, Jesus, to join me for the day activities. Thank you. It's important for us Christians, not just on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning, but as you do, different parts of your house and your heart, you invite Jesus to your work and to your daily activities. What is the Lenten season? To give up some food items? Not really. It's to always invite Jesus into your life every day. Recommit saying, Lord, as I did so many times, I'll have my quiet times for a couple of days, and then I fade off. So busy. But Jesus is never busy for you and I. He wants a relationship. And that's the beauty. Next week, we'll look at our recreational life. And just how many times do we invite Jesus to join us when we party and we play? In Jesus' name, amen.